So I first show you a story of one woman who was extraordinary uh, because of her artistic ability. This is Harriet Francis, and uh, she published a book that you can buy, Drawing It Out. I wrote a preface, I did some uh, work with her before, before writing that preface. So I will show you first this uh, kind of a synoptic view of those images and then uh, show you one picture after another and say something about it. From now on it's going to be really, you know, right, right at this period. Okay, so this is a journey of one very talented, uh, very talented uh, artist who had no knowledge of Jungian psychology, no knowledge of shamanism. This, this whole thing came out of her psyche, and it's a mixture of perinatal and transpersonal images, which means something coming from the levels of the psyche that are not recognized by current psychiatry other than being the result of some strange pathology. Some, these, these things start happening to people, and they get the diagnosis. Okay, so this is the first picture, but it's getting heavier now. She feels oppression on her, on her chest, and there's this anxious anticipation. And she realizes that, and she surrenders. And the next thing is, you see, this is one of the ways this beginning of this process happens. This is not just relieving birth, this becomes ultimately that uh, uh, the process of psycho-spiritual death and rebirth, this will become a spiritual opening, not just the replay of the biology. So you can, you can see the archetypes sort of playing into it. So now she is, she is in this gigantic vortex, whirlpool, that's pulling her in, and uh, the mandala made of uh, skulls and root cages is telling you what this is about. She is now going to experience profound confrontation with death. And as I mentioned before, there is death in birth. Okay? You read in philosophical books that people are afraid of death because we know we would die. But it's not so. We, we already know what it is like to have our lives threatened because we, we have been there, we have experienced that. And don't, don't want to go back. Okay, now she is now in the underworld. You can think about uh, things like uh, Joseph Campbell's the, the Hero's Journey, Journey into the Underworld, or various mythologies, uh, Odysseus, uh, Orpheus, uh, Inanna, and so those are, those are the mythologies that, that are being played out here. So she's in the underworld, the skulls, the, the bones, and she is now suffering. She is on a rack. She, there are ordeals. You can also think about the uh, initiatory journey of the shamans. This is like an initiation, shamanic initiation. Shaman travels, novice shaman travels into the, uh, the underworld, is exposed to ordeal, you know, ends up uh, dismembered, and then being put together, new, new blood, new eyes, and then there's a journey to the supernal realm. So this is very much what's happening to her. Um, there is a spider, which is a very kind of pitiful, pitiful specimen. So I will talk about you know, them when we see some better examples. Now she is now in the underworld with a sense of kind of abysmal loneliness. This, this is happening on an archetypal level, but on the biological level, it is now when the uterus contracts and cuts off any meaningful connection between the mother and the child. So when, when this kind of pattern starts emerging, this, this becomes a deep depression for the person, and the person feels like the fetus, feels cut off from any meaningful connections, like being surrounded by loving people and not feeling it, not having any connection, or being in a, in a crowd of people and feeling feeling uh, alone. 
Now, now the she just has amazing, amazing images as you can see. Crushing, obviously, is part of the birth experience. So she is here under this gigantic boulder, and the boulder has human face. What a better, what a better representation of birth, which is coming from a human being, but has a mechanical, very mechanical quality. Um, first, it was her husband, and she thought it was a metaphor that she is she she was in an oppressive marriage, and then it started. Uh, becoming more like her mother, and then connecting to, to her childhood, where the mother was crushing her and strangling her, not literally, but had this sort of constricting influence on her. And then she realized that there was one situation in her life where the mother was literally crushing her, which was when she was delivering her. And so you can almost feel another octave here, where you have now Sisyphus in the underworld, so that rolling that heavy boulder and then he thought he had it and then he loses it and has to go for it again uh, and like in the rhythm of the contractions you know you get a little breather and you, you, you go again so uh sisyphus hercules the labors of hercules you have the scatological one they when he had to clean the stables of uh, ogaius he goes into the underworld for for Kerberos and so on so many of the labors of Hercules are archetypes that can, that can emerge around this. Again, another fantastic one. Now she confronted now uh, a situation where she's dying and being born at the same time. Okay, the lower part is all death, the upper part is birth. She's trying to get out of there. So showing the ambiguity. In our left hemisphere, we don't make connection between birth and death. You know, birth is at the beginning of life, happens to a small child, death happens to old people, sick people. Uh, but the, in, in the psyche, in the unconscious, they are not inseparable. I mean, you can be dying and being born at the same time if you are in the process of psychospiritual uh, death rebirth. Another interesting one, here she got manual help from the obstetrician, but her experience is a demigod is rescuing her from the, from the underworld. And a classical shamanic sequence of the, what we would call ego death rebirth. Sort of, uh, again, she didn't know anything about shamanism, this is annihilation, total annihilation. And then the journey, the magic journey into the supernal world. Now, at this point, very frequently people connect with um, mythological uh, beings, you know, uh, heroes, gods, demigods, who represent in different cultures death and rebirth. So you have Isis, Osiris, or you have uh, uh, Dionysus' uh, story, you have Atis, Adonis. Uh, the Mayan, twins, Quetzalcoatl, every major culture <coughs> has that story. And many people from our culture at this point would identify with Jesus on the cross. And you know, we had that discussion. A lot of people think that because they experience themselves as Jesus, they are the second coming. And uh, current Christianity helps them because instead of telling them that everybody is Jesus, uh, um, Jung talks about uh, Jesus as the symbol of the, of the self, those two aspects that we have. So, the story that you hear, that 2,000 year, years ago this miracle happened when God got incarnate, and ever since that time we are miserable sinners waiting for the second coming. So people who have the experience of being Jesus, they think they are the second coming, instead of realizing Anybody can have that experience. It's there in the archetypal, in the archetypal world. So this could be any other so figure representing death reverse from culture that, that you, you had never heard about. Now this is a symbolic representation of it's over, the process, inner process is completed, and when you get stitches, it's kind of closing. 
And then we see this thing, which is now, she's emerging out of the birth canal with the vision of a, of a peacock. A peacock cross-culturally is a symbol of uh, rebirth, resurrection, uh, immortality, symbolizes the star-filled sky. In alchemy, you have Kauda Pavon, is the peacock, peacock tail. This moment could be not just an encounter with your mother, but this could be, again, a higher octave. At this point, you could experience the great mother goddess. And several of the great mother goddesses have a peacock at their birth. Hera, Juno, uh, Saraswati, and so on. We'll see it later in the, in the show. And the Lamaistic deities are shown on, on peacocks, and it's a powerful, powerful uh, symbol. And again, something interesting. Now she, she passed through the two matrices, and what happened, she was reborn, but now the regression <laughs> continues, and now the way is open all the way into the kind of prenatal state, which in this particular situation takes oceanic form, and she's now beca becoming one with different uh, fish, jellyfish, for some people, key, uh, dolphins, whales, and so on. So the fetal and the oceanic are both Neptunian states, and they're very, very closely, uh, closely related. And here she's coming down. The emphasis is she's grounded, she's connected, connecting to the earth, but the head is in heaven, and there are birds, again, as cross-cultural symbols of spiritual liberation. <coughs> 